Greetings, everyone. It is the uh, 25th of June. This is the uh, People-Centered Internet Community Call, and this is an open mic. So I'm delighted to uh, welcome all of you, uh, your ideas, your thoughts, uh, your voices to uh, anything that is on your mind. I'm going to remind you that um, our last speaker, John Awada, uh, asked for executives that uh, he might interview for the work that he was uh, doing in <clears throat> stakeholder capitalism at Yale. So if you have uh, uh, people that you want to recommend to John, I'm glad to uh, pass those along. Or if you want to get in touch with him directly, just let me know and I'll pr provide those credentials. So uh, how are we going to do this as we've done in the past? Um, you know, you can put topics that you would like to uh, tee up into chat and I'll call on you in, in order. And uh, if we have a, a first topic that we want to uh, tee up, I'll uh, eliminate the formality of the typing in chat and just have you, uh, you know, raise your hand either you know virtually or uh, or physically, and we'll uh, and we'll start. Does anybody have a, a first topic to uh, get us underway? Yeah, Doug Hulin. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's that's actually my cursor, right? Um, that <laughs> was the cursor. There you go. I, and that's not a participant in the call. Are you raising your hand, Barry? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, you are the first contestant on our <laughs> call today. Fantastic. <laughs> Barry, what have you got? I, I'm just starting to wonder if we have any idea what the path will be for uh, large language models like uh, GPT-4 uh, to become <clears throat> first trustworthy and later trusted. How is that going to happen? What's what's the um, what's the path here? And are there any uh, analogs that we can uh, look at? Like, uh, for example, um, Wikipedia started out um, not being very trusted or trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And that changed slowly over time, but there was a lot of work that went into that. And I don't know the history. I don't know what, uh, how that was done. And I'm curious about that. If anyone knows, I'd like to hear uh, what people know. And I'd also like to hear what people's thoughts are about what that might turn into for uh, these large language models. Okay, so I'm going to kick it off and then we're going to go around for other people who may want to comment. Uh, the, I think this all comes down to the data training sets, right, um, in terms of trustworthiness. Um, is, you know, do we actually understand what the large language model was trained on? And do we trust that data set, right? Do you think uh, that will be enough? I didn't say that it was enough. I said it was a starting point, right? Okay. In fact, you know, when I'm running experiments right now, I will uh, supply the information that I want, either Google Bard or OpenAI's uh, GPT Playground. I like GPT Playground, by the way, because you can control the variables. You can tell it which data training set to use. You can tell, you know, you can change the temperature in terms of how much it hallucinates, things of that nature. Um, the uh, So if you give it information to act on that you trust, then the likelihood that you're going to get back something, right, that you want to actually do something with is better. And mm -hmm. if you're prompting an area where you're a subject matter expert, you'll know more about whether the uh, response was trustworthy. So that's just my starting point, Barry. It, it, it is not in any way exhaustive. Mark, you're trying to raise your hand, I believe. Oh, I, 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 I wasn't actually, but I do have, but I have been thinking. <laughs> so my mm -hmm. hand went up. Um, I look at this a little bit differently, perhaps, mm -hmm. than others I've written a little bit. I just say this is a new kind of thinking. This is a part of humanism. The best analogy to, to everything that you just said is people. Uh, people mm -hmm. are a black box. The brain is a black box. Uh, we, we don't know how to control. We basically control it by choosing which person we talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and we say this person is going to give us less hallucination perhaps than others, but everybody is in some domain. 
Um, and this is because it's statistical thinking, people think it's not the same as the other stuff, but I think it's, I think it's just a new form of thinking. It has all the um, constraints that the other ones and the, the, the positives and negatives that fast thinking or slow thinking, I mean, heuristics, you could be saying this <clears throat> exact same conversation about. It's just, if we just substitute people for LLMs uh, in, mm -hmm. in the statements we make, I think we'll get equivalent statements. So it's more a social problem than a technical problem? Uh, it's a human problem. It's mm -hmm. in a sense, it's a, it's an imper it's a problem of imperfection and also of, of complexity that we just don't understand ourselves. We don't understand. I mean, we make up things like I did. I thought this through logically by A, B, C, D, but that's not really as Kahneman cleverly pointed out what happens. We've got all these biases. We've got all these things. And, and so I think we just have to, it's an, it's a human imperfection problem is what it is. Uh, yes, this is Ben. Uh, uh, putting on sort of a, uh, from the computer science standpoint, I, I always lament that we misspell AI and we focus singularly on ML as a part of it. And to Mark's point, in, in part, it's, it's the nature of the engine to be statistically based uh, uh, thought process. And, but as humans, we mix modes. We, we mix logic, we mix semantics, we mix in ontologies, and those things are often absent from these uh, discourse. I was happy you mentioned the, the Wikipedia uh, episode, because in the beginning, in the early days of Wikipedia, when I was, once when I was giving a talk to a large group of CIOs and uh, they were harumphing about people using this thing, Wikipedia, you don't let your students use Wikipedia, do you? And my response was, no, I don't let them use it. I demand they use it. I demand they use it as a part of critical inquiry. And by the way, over time, they've learned and adapted to trust it because it has learned and adapted to reduce its bias and disinformation. We don't have that luxury in the, in the uh, LLM domain. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you can't eliminate bias by saying, take out the bias uh, that's in it. It's imbued in it. And that's why to Kevin's point, it starts with the training data. Mm -hmm. And my, my remedy is uh, more like the drug industry that we have now, that we will certify, create, FDA, approve different chunks. We, we tend to look on the LLMs as monolithic instead of chunked data that is assembled. And I, I will, I'll stake Mark's life on the fact <laughs> that in the that in the future we will take uh, certified chunks of information of, mm -hmm. of LLMs and bring them in concert. And just as with um, uh, the drug certification, we look at we certify the individual drug, but we also speak to the uh, interrelationship of those drugs and interaction effects. So that when we assemble them together, we warn or, or complement interaction effects in there, akin to what Kevin was talking about. And I stake his life on that, that part as well. And, and so as we, as we proceed on this, I think uh, it's uh, certifying the tra training data, making sure we chunk not only the entry for that certification, but that we chunk the LLMs and that our engines are mechanisms of, of uh, leveraging a concert and, and combinatorial action of relative and contextually combined uh, LLMs. Other than that, I have no opinion. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> I, I think that was, that's pretty much in concert with, with uh, the, the way that I'm currently thinking about it. And I don't, I, I don't have any thought that what we want is 
a anthropomorphized version of this. What I'm thinking is we want companion intelligences that we trust right, in certain domain areas. And Doug Hulin has his hand up. Doug, you're next. Yeah. Yeah, so a couple comments. Uh, yeah, like Palm Med is a good example. Google's Palm Med that they uh, and they also have a security segment for security knowledge. So they do fine tuning of mm -hmm. medical knowledge like Palm Med to be nine times reduction in inaccurate reasoning. What, what is that? What is What's Palm? That? Med? Uh, well, Palm is a new model uh, for uh, you know, like for Bard for Google, like Google, okay. Google when Google announced in May their new model. You know, mm -hmm. just like Chat GPT four mm -hmm. or GPT four for OpenAI, mm -hmm. uh, Google's is Palm, and uh, they also announced that they're working on another model called Gemini that's supposed to be out by the end of the year. But the specifically, what you're saying is it's trained in medicine or some subsection. Yeah, yeah. So there's general training, and then there's specific. Palm is trained specifically on on different. Yeah, I was medicine. aware of Palm. I just you you were just invoking Palm Med, right? Yeah, actually, Palm Med. med. <laughs> Med Palm or Sec Palm. So basically, how, whatever is trained on um, to do, and so there's a lot of data that says how does it, you know, score versus you know uh, doctors, you know, like mm -hmm. the medical professionals that have pass all the medical uh, boards um, in terms of reasoning and accuracy, and uh, and then you know like how you know like there's you know where patients would ask questions and say, okay, I ask a doctor or I ask a patient. Or, or this uh, um, med palm, and which one do I like better, right? So, uh, you know, um, so anyway, bottom line, the reason I bring that up is that, you know, it's, it's about the fine tuning, you know, is the training data one, you know, so are you training it on the right data, you know, that, that doesn't allow for hallucinations or, you know, makes it trustworthy. In fact, in traffic, they're focusing on trustworthiness, truthfulness, and one other T, I forget the name of it. But, um, you know, it's kind of like, how do you make sure that, you know, hallucinations don't happen, right? How do you make sure it's very accurate um, data, which is medicine is absolutely critical, right? And so this is what's, it was being, uh, um, you know, developed, you know, and there's times where, you know, you want an interaction, you know, that's more creative, right? And, and Bing does that, right? It says, okay, do you want the response to be more creative, you know, that, that they have some hallucinations, or do you want it to be more precise, Mm -hmm. um, and I guess my last comment would be, you know, uh, Wikipedia actually had a list of uh, things that were accurate in Wikipedia and were um, wrong in uh, Encyclopedia of Britannica, right? Um, you know, so, you know, it's like at the end of the day, you know, you have sources of, uh, you know, like, you know, Wikipedia or Britannica, you had different encyclopedias, and then one won out, which was, uh, you know, Wikipedia at the end of the day, much more people, I don't even know if um, Encyclopedia Britannica is even used anymore. Um, so I think this is what's going to be happening with these large language models. You know, those who are more trustworthy, more the truthful, not inaccurate, that are trained specifically on an expertise of your 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 use case, um, will be the ones that win out. Okay, Doug, thanks for for that thought. Barry, you've got your hand back up. Yeah, no, no. I I wanted to follow up on what Doug was just saying about, or I was thinking in a similar direction. Uh, to Doug and, and uh, to some extent Mark as well. The, um, we spend a lot of time and effort in our education system teaching our kids about trust, how to be trustworthy and how to uh, decide if someone is trustworthy. And it seems like perhaps we need to go in a similar direction uh, with our large language models. Um, just to I mean, the... Um... I'm reminded just a little bit of introductory uh, philosophy, you know, where you're trying to define what good is, right? And you, it's it's somewhat recursive, right? Um, you know, that becomes self-referential. Um, but I, I think that this this is all, you know, quite good. Mark, you have your hand back up. I do have my hand back up. Thank you, everybody. This is great. Um, so some of the statements that I've heard, like how how was this model trained? That's the, those are the statements we ask about humans, right? When you have, if you run a hospital and you're hiring doctors, you say, well, how is this person trained on what set of data, what country, what all this kind mm -hmm. of thing? You ask that same question. You ask the same question about how trustworthy do you think this person is? 
um, is this, and we have certifications that try to help with that, but we never know because we have rogue doctors and we have all this kind of stuff. So in a sense, maybe we're talking about like a bigger organism than just one person. Mm -hmm. And so to make that organism better, that organism has a bunch of parts. Some of those parts are humans. Some of those parts are what we're now calling LLMs, right? And or or Wikipedia's or other things. And all of those things are part are put together to form the thinking of this entity, whatever you want to call it, the hospital, the problem, the medical system, the the anything like that. And so that because I have a lot of trouble distinguishing a large language model from um, heuristic thinking, uh, an individual's heuristic thinking. I think they're they're just versions of something trying to do similar things. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to produce certain kinds mm -hmm. of results out of certain kinds of data and uh, to a certain and perhaps to a certain end. I mean, the one one diff one thing you can say about LLMs is they don't they don't have a good conception, I think, of the end, uh, whereas we might have a conception of the end. But but um, I think we start need to start expanding the we and the who we are, and to start including these things in part of who we are, instead of saying it's us and Wikipedia, it's us and Bard, it's us and all these different things. Uh, they're part. They're going to be parts of us, just like uh, all the things that are parts of us. All our parents are parts of us. All our all the history that we had. Our culture is part of us, um, and it's very hard to not use that in our thinking. Ben, you're putting some thinking in in chat. Uh, rejoin. Yeah, I, th I, I think the. Um... I, I agree wholly with uh, with Mark. We in academia, we teach about skills, but uh, I, I tell the students from the beginning that how you think is more important than what you know. And we spend so much time often on no on knowledge in our in our schools, and we used to even be worse at at that in the past. But the ones that succeed are those that develop skills and on critical thinking. I teach a class uh, in in my class course. I teach a class about prompt engineering a little bit, uh, two two class sessions, and this, the the uh, module is called spell casting at Hogwarts, and it is a uh, it is in that spirit that you you look at the notion of how you make things happen that wouldn't happen unless you otherwise um, engaged it. And so I ask them to, I do a sorting hat to have them decide that they're initially all Ron Weasley and uh, they need to channel their inner Hermione um, and, and aspire to achievement of Dumbledore. But then when they, um, <clears throat> when you look at it, how they interact is more important. It's a conversational AI and people are starting to approach it because they're coming from the uh, search world they, they come at it with a search and keyword approach and almost expect the answer from one expression uh, to, uh, to be meaningful to them. And so you have to teach a conversational engagement. My rule of thumb is treat the engine like it was a very bright intern who is uh, not always honest, and is uh, um, obsequiously uh, uh, compliant, expecting to please. Like yourself, you mean? Like us. Like myself. <laughs> as, are, as are we, as Mark. As are we. The, I, I mean, that's one of the things well, that's no. built into the uh, large language model thing, is that it's trying to please you, right? Mm -hmm. That is an assumption in the programming, is that it wants to give you back a response that you'll say, oh, this is good. Right, so Wait. it just, it wants to give you a pheromone or a uh, not pheromone, a uh, an endorphin head. head. You would a dopamine head, head, right from the the response. Right, so just FYI, we need a Don Rickles LLM. Then, uh... 
Yes, Mark. I'm reminded of of De Bono's thing, you know, six hats. I think everybody probably knows that. Is is LLMs just another hat? Could be. Is it just another thinking hat, and that it's important to put on from time to time and bring into the mix, and that uh, and and uh, if you don't have, if you don't try on all the hats, you're not going to. And and maybe that's the definition of what critical thinking is, because that's a term that really is thrown around undefined enormously. And and the uh, I told somebody yesterday they should do their PhD on 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 um, explaining critical thinking on at least setting out some uh, ideas about it because it really it doesn't. I don't know what it means, critical thinking. I, I I hear people saying things that may be closer to it, but that would be a great discussion for for a group like this. Is what the excuse me is critical thinking? Yeah, I have a, a short definition of that is uh, discernment. Well, that's that's interesting. I uh, I. You know, I used to, uh, when I took a course in, in college in uh, art history, I had a great professor, and she used to start every class that we had by putting up two images on the screen, one of which was a, a, an original and one of which was a forgery. And the question was always, which is the forgery and why? How can you tell? And so judgment is that, and it basically happens through my senses from that, is that it happens through lots of examples, uh, you know, hundreds of examples of feedback. And that's what we're giving the machine. Is, uh, that's training That's training an LLM is essentially a hundred, you know, a billion examples plus feedback. And it builds up judgment. And that's what humans do. So is that critical thinking? Then it, by that definition, an LLM is critical thinking. Or if it's not an LLM that's producing the, a, 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 uh, an AI, whatever we call it, a uh, deep learning model is critical thinking by that definition. I, I, <clears throat> I would wholeheartedly agree with that. That, that in, in, in fact, it is a part of, it's an opportunity of, of engagement for critical thinking, just as a, a uh, Encyclopedia Britannica would have been uh, 50 years ago. Colliers or some uh, some mm -hmm. other resource, knowledge resource, but it's an assertion, assertion contributing to the discernment that Kevin's talking about uh, as well. But it's that raising question and mm -hmm. uh, uh, raising question and all in the continuous engagement of of the framework of the idea, the proper pursuit of question, and uh, starting by the by the issue of challenging the question you're asking, uh, that um, you you beg your uh, professor begged the question by saying that one was true and one was false uh, from the beginning, and uh, so it, it sort of channels the inquiry in, into uh, into that pursuit, and that may be fair for that perspective. But I'm uh, one wants to ask about the validity and utility of each of these images and tell me something about these images that informs you in your uh, in your life or need or according to your practice but what we do and i i don't want to monopolize here what we do is we we look at these examples over and over again and then we make up our own heuristics that's that's what's he called fast thinking Right, what Kahneman called fast thinking. You say, ah, if I see a line that isn't, uh, you know, exactly like this or this or that, and we do that, and that's and that then becomes expertise, and it, and it becomes expert discernment in a sense. That is, that is to say, if if I give you, you know, uh, a signature, saying you're an expert, you can tell me whether it's the person's signature or not. You'll look at a lot of clues. You'll look at a lot of things. But the place where discernment <clears throat> becomes problematic, I think, can you, you know, let's talk about discernment. Who is a Nazi? Who is a citizen? Who is a, who is a, can I discern these things? 
can I, am I thinking critically if I say, um, you know, who is white, who is black? Because there's lots of shades of gray in between. How do I discern? What do you mean by discernment? Okay, well, I'm going to just give you the quick answer in, in this little parable, which is, you know, I like a lot of the work that Frank Lloyd Wright has brought to us over the years, right? And I have books and so on and so forth. I also recognize that his ideas needed a lot of improvement because a lot of his homes and buildings leak, okay? They, they were engineering from one point of view, good ideas that needed, right? Can I tell what a Frank Lloyd Wright idea looks like? Yes. Does that mean that I want to make it exactly the way that he did when he was working at Taliesin and, and other places? No, all right? It took other people to move the ideas forward. So when I talk about discernment, I'm also talking about an authentic idea and also knowing that it can be improved, right? And moving it forward. So uh, that's humanity, so, right? Isn't that? Oh, I'm just saying that that's, that's part of understanding. I think I recognize a part of something that I want to use but I don't have to necessarily copy it in its entirety. That is all, when you get the training of say a surgeon, you know, maybe I like, you know, the fact that this person was trained at a particular university or hospital system. However, when you're going in and getting a particular procedure, after time, what you're looking for are outcomes, right? And you're saying, which person has done this procedure successfully a lot of times, all right? And I don't care where they got their degree from, right? Eventually, the original training fades away in the context of the actual outcomes that that person is producing. And the same is going to be true for large language models and the way that they're trained is, are they producing outcomes that we consider to be desirable? Oh, yeah. And and because they, and certain pieces of technology can be much more consistent in producing those outcomes than humans can. You wouldn't, you know, 100%. Your surgeon depends on the guy doing your LASIK may depend on, you know, what he had for dinner, but the, uh, or what he, what he drank last night, whereas the machine doesn't. Yeah. Right? We already see this in terms of visual models that are looking at x-rays. It's already happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, we have and, been on this topic for half an hour. Um, I want to see whether anybody else has something that they want to insert as a new topic, or we can keep going with, with this one if there isn't a new topic. Hearing no new topic. Well, I would I would segue from what Barry okay. said. Okay, in a moment, we're going to uh, call on Britt. He's raising his hand. Uh, fin Go finish up your thought, that. Mark. I, I will segue later, but I was going to segue to what we call education. Uh, because okay, so Barry, let's, Barry let's have that. that as a topic, but Britt had his hand up first. So Britt, take, come off a of mute. What is your topic, sir? I've, uh, I spent most of <clears throat> 2022 uh, refining the architecture, something I call Congress 3.0. <clears throat> okay. It's a t topic I've studied since I was involved with the Howard Dean campaign and realize that politics is not the answer. Democracy is the answer. And what mechanisms are already in place uh, for essentially direct democracy. And it uh, turns out there's an immense amount of data that's out there. And there's a relatively clear uh, architecture implicit in those data. And, uh, and it means that I would define at this point democracy as the uh, um, where a constituency habitually convinces their representative to add a provision to a law and a, a bill in a committee. Uh, committees are where the sausage is made. And if you have a habit pattern of saying, we would like you to introduce this provision as part of a law, that is democracy. Everything else is, you know, a word salad. So okay. um, I'm interested in anybody who wants to work on this, take this and run with it. And uh, <clears throat> we have a lot of um, tech technology we developed, the GeoVoter API, uh, which with 61 lines of code can tell you uh, which eight jurisdictions you're in. 
Uh, and there's a Do lot you know more Marcy there. Harris on the uh, PCI um, board? Yeah, I've, I've uh, intersected with her a little bit and, and May Lynn has often suggested. Um, her thing is crowd pack, right? No, her thing is pop box. Well, that's, you know, was the original line of thinking, but there are some other derivative things that, you know, she's, I've had some recent conversations that she's looking at some other things beyond pop box, Britt. Hmm. For instance, I, you know, I know that there's work underway to draft legislation using, you know, tech um, that comes from the legal profession. And what I offered her as a alternative you know, point of view is, great. Now, why don't we create a model that models the constituents that are represented by that person's, you know, district or, you know, whatever their territory is, and be able to read the nine Manhattan telephone directories of any particular legislation and find the issues that that constituency and that particular legislator is interested in so that they can find it rapidly um, in digital form and be able to make the right kinds of, you know, uh, arguments and or amendments, right, to represent it properly. Because I can see drafting being rapidly sped up, but evaluation, I don't see the same amount of, you know, um, of, you know, rigor. And so I've suggested that to Marcy and, and said that we ought to be able to model that to be able to also speed up the evaluation and integrity of evaluation. So that's just the, the good that's the kind of thing that, that we're thinking about. I ask you the good news is that, excuse me, let me respond to that. Yeah, uh, please. That work is being, is being done uh, by about a half a dozen Pew, <clears throat> Pew Research Group, uh, Ipsos, Harvard IOP, uh, NORC PAC, uh, AP NORC. Uh, actually, they're all in a paper I, I could upload if that were helpful. Do it. My question is are, we, are you distinguishing? between uh, democracy as in everybody votes and it's a legal requirement to vote on everything and decide uh, and a repu and republic which is the the representative democracy where some people get to vote it's an option uh, you can do that are you just uh, are you thinking about how we can have more direct democracy or more or better indirect democracy what, what I call republic um, better direct democracy on the open source crowdsourcing model. You know, why don't voters crowdsource policy? And this has been described, I'll upload that paper in a second, uh, very well by, <clears throat> by Clay Shirky in how the internet will one someday transform government. Uh, pointed out that, <clears throat> excuse me, the legislators and programmers have exactly the same workflow. They draft, edit, and manipulate blocks of arcane text, which when added to an existing code base have real effects in the real world. Uh, the difference is that programmers immediately start fixing the, the problems uh, and uh, legislators go to the Rose Garden to celebrate because they're not gonna have to screw around with that code ever again. <laughs> Sorry, I had to uh, let the dog out, all right? That, that one of the uh, uh, things that happens, or... right, um, that a large language model cannot help me with, right? <laughs> uh, so um, I, I look forward to having a smart environment that would be responsive to 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 that in the future. Ben, you you had some thoughts as you were listening to this? Yeah, no, I, I think it's an intriguing um, intriguing challenge, and we need to start not by trying to fix the past as much as understand what the, to me, what the aspiration of the 21st century model of a democracy could be. Mm -hmm. And and then how we might create the engines and tools and mechanisms to uh, enable that to happen and what waypoints along the way. It's not a one-step process. It's going to be four or five, six steps. What are the waypoints to that? that uh, ideal of democracy too often and and others have heard me in this in this group say that we spend too much try, time trying to fix the 20th century and i don't want to get bogged down in trying to fix the the way 
laws are made now or the way laws are influenced in their creation now, but what, what's in the aspirational form that we might build the platforms and step processes that allow us to continue the engagement. The last thing I would, I would hate to do is to uh, perceive that a LLM can represent the, the constituents the population by by study of their past we know their mind mm. and uh and so i i would rather have tools of group and i've worked a lot on group decision processes i would like to have use the the tools to operate in domains of of uh, engagement not surrogacy and and i other than that, i have no opinion okay and I, again, I have a question, and I, this is a question for the group because it's serious. I've been thinking about this for a long time. There's a, in the, in the United States, voting is a privilege. You can do it. Many many elections are are decided by a very small percentage of the potential electorate. In Australia, as I understand it, you have to vote. It's a it's a it's an obligation. And therefore, we want to have we want everybody's vote. If you don't, we're going to put penalties on you. Uh, which which is more? And so then maybe I'll ask Brett um, or Brit, excuse me. Uh, which which I've always thought that the Australian system is something we should all have, and the American system is so flawed uh, in letting people vote or not, and especially because then it leads to excluding people from voting. Um, what 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 do people think about this? Why does why isn't that discussion a bigger discussion in the U.S.? Brett, do you have a thought? Yeah, uh, I've worked on this for about seventeen years and it's about hundred thousand miles a year. Okay, <laughs> so I thought about this a lot. And when we get down a rat hole, is where we talk about things that aren't going to get done. We aren't mm -hmm. going to adopt that in this country the way we are politically set up. And so we need to start in small, small measures and to think about, you know, micro issues almost. You know, what, what is a provision that we would like? Um, let's talk about large language models. If we wanted some oversight of large language models, what is the first small um, piece of code that we would like to add to the law? And we should be thinking in very specific terms. Otherwise, it's just, you know, uh, uh, wool gathering. Which brings us back to education. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get back to that in, in a moment. We're clearly gonna address that, Mark. But I just want to no, make no, sure. no, no. I I, I don't want to address it. I just say because it's exactly the same no, problem of incrementalism versus do we do we start a new system? I. Uh, the, I think that what Brit is potentially pointing to is, is there fertility for, you know, actually cultivating that crop, right? And he's seeing low fertility, and maybe you see higher fertility, but we can get on that when we're talking about education and, and potential. I want to ask, Coco, you're with us. Um, uh, you, if you can hear my voice, um, I wanted to ask you a question. Yes, Mr. Kevin, I can hear. Great. So um, where do we find you this morning or th this <laughs> afternoon in your time or evening? Oh, I'm in Kigali now. Okay, good. So I'm just preparing in on 3rd July to launch uh, STEM. Okay. Uh, so uh, you're STEM going to be kids. Great. That's a, that's going to be a good um, add to the conversation that Mark wants to have. Uh, let me ask you, um, you know, what what do you think about applying technology to, you know, um, better governance? What, what is your thinking for Brit? Uh -huh. uh, that's come right to my point. So I'm facing to this same problem in democracy. Republic of the Congo. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 
we are in totally nuance between Rwanda and Congo. That is two rare example. Mm -hmm. Talking about Congo Democratics, because a long time I left Congo Brazzaville. So in Rwanda, the government invest in technologies, invest real in technology, putting fiber everywhere, um, advertisement, making promotion of technologies, while is totally different in Congo. In Congo, the government, the governor, government talk, but they never realize anything. When they see they're, they're a little bit, they are late, really, not even late, so they really down, really down. They, they, they decide to vote the law, but while they don't have any infrastructure, they don't promote any infrastructure. You bring solutions on the table, but no one understand you. Hmm. Corruption, corruption, corruption everywhere. They are living with that like that. Creating war in the East, all chief of grab army, of army grab, they are in an institution in Kinshasa. They are member of parliament. They are ministers. But they don't care about the development of the country. So since I think it's about four years since one businessman went to contract with uh, with an Egyptian companies to come to implement at least 16,000 kilometers of optical fiber, just interconnect towns. That was the first step to do things, but that, that project never, never, never even started. I even by myself to discuss with the government, with the government company, government institution saying that, okay, if you don't have support, you don't have money to support the project, okay, except to pull up some infrastructure, just fiber, put infrastructures, I'm in connection with some American company which can help me with some equipment and myself, I will divide, I will develop solutions. Try even to decrease telephonic costs all over the countries. Try to develop internet infrastructures, but no one can understand that now no one can hear it. Why? Because if we develop infrastructure, especially especially internet infrastructures, if we develop it, means behind internet infrastructures, we will develop solution to be used. Officialists, the businesses, it will decrease corruptions. Myself, by myself in many ministries offices, they already told me, you guys, what are you coming to bring your solution here for us to no longer eat money? We live for that, we are living for that. So for them, corruption is just the life. That is the life. Really, technology will come to democratize all the system, mm -hmm. to clean all the corruption way. But we have to talk, we have to fight until we arrive at that place. That's why sometimes I think just in the meeting here, uh, one of our uh, elder mentors here in uh, PCI received some people came with the president, our president of Congo security came to Washington. They receive, you receive here some, a woman by the name of, if I do remember, have a fresh mind, was Stephanie Bombo, I think so. 
-hmm. He was in charge to contact people in America so that American can bring can bring technology to help the Congo to be demo, uh, to, to, to be developed. But until today, if you talk about technology, no one will hear you. They just travel, they just travel, they just create conflict in the East. Then to say that is Rwanda, is this, is Uganda, is, but they own themselves, they are the chief of army ground. They unite, they, all, they want just to put hands on diamond, hands on gold, and buy army, we don't know where, lead army group, and to be there forever, and the country not adversity. But really, the technology will do something real good. I was planning now to see how I can negotiate with uh, the solution from SpaceX, if I can use those satellites and pull them everywhere in the countries, and that can bring another bandwidth where there is no fiber. And in reality, there is no fiber. Mm -hmm. Fiber is just <clears throat> limited in Kinshasa, in town of Kinshasa. Goma is just some telecom companies, they try to interconnect themselves through the fiber in the east, mm -hmm. through Rwanda, in the west, through Angola and through the ocean, that's all. But towns, we are not interconnected. But maybe if we promote the solution of Elon Musk with or SpaceX, with those satellites, we can supply good internet. And it's really, is. I can see just uh, Rwanda is making some tests. And of that test, I can see in Rwanda, the, the basic solutions is four, five times cheap than the officials. So if I take it in Congo, it will be 20 to 30 times cheap mm -hmm. than the normal connectivity in the place where there is fiber. But if I can take it to Walikale, uh, to Kindu, to Kisangani, where they never, they never dream to, 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 to use the fiber, that will be very, uh, very good. To push up democracy using internet, using technologies. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy. It's not easy. It's it it never has been. In fact, I think that even the work that PCI is doing to understand same barriers in Puerto Rico on a smaller scale, you know, uh, may prove useful. Uh, Coco, thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, just the You're welcome, basic, you know, communication capabilities. Yes. Uh, the applications follow. I'm I'm reminded of, you know, banking in uh, on on the continent that you're part of, is that mm -hmm. the you know creating bricks and mortar banks kind of got skipped to you know, moving directly to m-commerce, you know, on devices. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, th there are some skips that need to take place um, here, too. It may turn out that, you know, that wireless moves faster than than fiber, but, you know, clearly fiber, you know, uh, has so much more uh, capacity, right, to, uh, yeah. to interconnect the city. So, uh, Brit, Ben, uh, you know, going back to the original thought that you had that kicked us off, Barry, do you have any thoughts for Coco? Um, given <clears throat> what he's trying to navigate, trying to uh, accomplish, because it's it's a different perspective than you know than the rest of us. And I might ask Gopi, I don't know where you are, but you may have some thoughts that you want to share. Or, Gopi, where are you before we go to anyone else? Where are you located? Hey, Kevin, thank you, everyone. Uh, this has been my meditation Sunday morning, listening to all the very profound, deep uh, insights. Thanks for, this is my first community meeting uh, to join officially, though. I joined the PCI mm. just a few weeks ago. So welcome. I'm very excited to be here. You're part. welcome. <laughs> welcome, Brother Gopi. So welcome. yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> to answer you. <laughs> so to answer your question, um, yes, I'm actually in the San Francisco Bay Area. My full-time okay. job is at Google. Uh, I did brief interaction with Brent and me 
recently, then I thought, okay, I should get involved in this community. So um, I, I'm happy to do a formal introduction another time, but in the interest of time, um, I think this is, like I said, I just tuned in to listen and, and mm -hmm. then try and see what are the different perspectives. So these are some really some global challenge. And I think I come from some technology areas of expertise that I have been doing it for quite some time. Definitely connectivity, I think some of you have solved for the first 20 years in from where I started my career, uh, but still the digital division, I think I, I saw the G7 paper that uh, me had proposed on Japan 2023 on the Ting 7. Uh, I, I solidly see there is a huge amount of digital division in terms of uh, the data which is available to certain pocket, but not to uh, others um, is causing you know, um, huge amount of difference in ability for people to access the right amount of information. So mm -hmm. um, my perspective, I think, um, you know, I, I already mentioned in one of the uh, key point that I think that was Ben, or I forgot who it was. I think there's more, when it comes to AI, there's more uh, models needs to be trained on a specific use case with a more um, need basis. Uh, that'll become make the models more trustable in my view, uh, but we are still very beginning of that era, I guess. There's more work to be done. I'm sure you are the experts, many of you. I'm not an AI ML specialist, by the way. <laughs> um, but um, going back to Coco, I think I, I totally agree. I, I, where I grew up and I come from, I, I can clearly relate and resonate to some of the um, thoughts and opinions that's coming from there. Um, I don't have a solid opinion on how we can solve that, but I like the idea Britt had proposed. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting, I have never thought about having in a uh, GitHub kind of a, you know, community, an open source model for the uh, legislators and the policy decision makers. Um, why not? Like uh, it should have been done in, in the past itself. So I want to pass here. Um, if there are any questions that I'm happy to answer, but I would, this is fantastic. So thanks for having me here. I would look forward to connect with a few of you and based on needs, and I'm happy to also do a formal introduction later on. Okay, very good. Britt, back Thank to you, you for a moment, <clears throat> um, to kind of tie a bow around, you know, the topic that you introduced, um, you know, what you heard from Coco um, and from others, all right? Oh, what would you want to do next? And then I'm going to go to Mark, all right, both for his uh, comment on this topic and to segue over into education. Fred, you're on mute, my friend. Lower left-hand corner. <laughs> um, you might look at the Congress 3.0 uh, mm -hmm. document. It's about very specific things. And it takes very few people uh, to actually move a legislator to do to add a provision to do something in a committee meeting. If you're not acting in the committee, you're not acting. All legislators are the same worldwide. Uh, you can go on Wikipedia and look up the committees of the Russian Duma. And on those committees, the people who draft the laws in specific areas, just as we do. And those people are very concerned, as are our legislators, of what a small group of their constituents feels in a congressional district of 750,000 people in the United States, 75 verified constituents can move a needle in the office. Now, if 75 people get together and say, uh, Mr. Congressman, in this hearing that's coming up in three weeks in the you know, uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, we'd like you to add, propose this provision regarding net neutrality. And the staff is going to, the rep is going to say, well, do we want to do that? And the staff is going to say it's 75 voters and it's not stupid. And the point is to have policy wonks drafting these proposals so they're not ideological and not com combative. And that's the core of the process. Okay. Well, I see the link and I'm looking forward to reading it. Thank you for uh, bringing this uh, topic to us today. And I hope you find some uh, resources to uh, support. I, I, in principle, it sounds like something that's well worth 
you know, supporting. Mark, you have your hand up. And so I'm going to ask you to comment inside this thread and then to segue us over into um, our next topic, education. I'm also going to just say that we are at the hour mark in just a moment. You know, for those of you who need to go, we're about to go into our half hour overtime session. So please stay with us if, if you have time. For those of you who need to go, thank you very much for being part of it. Mark, over to you. Uh, I'd like to speak to Coco. Uh, thank, first, thank you for being here. And uh, it's the thought that I have always had, and I'm going to offer this, I don't know if it's right, is that if we organize young people differently, we they can do some of the things that we have been unable to do. Uh, if we don't, the, the word that keeps coming back to my mind is training. We're talking about training models. If we train the people in, in your country or in our country or in any country to behave like the people behave today, which is what we essentially try to do, that's what education is, uh, then yes. we're going to get we're going to wind up with either the same results or worse because the environment's changing, potentially worse results. And so, uh, how do we get around that problem? My view has always been it it has to start with the young people, and it's not it can't be education as we have conceived it i.e. learning in advance the same curriculum that we now have for uh, mostly the entire world, the mess of mathing or science social studies or math language science social studies. Uh, so I'm re really interested in your opinion, Coco, and then everybody's opinion on whether if we found ways to organize the young people around what they want, what they would like to see, the issues that they would like to see different in their world, in their country, in their uh, place, that we could perhaps make some progress so they could connect with the with with Musk, they could connect, they could put in infrastructure, they could do a whole lot of things that we usually don't give kids credit for being able to do. I think now uh, it's time to do that. So I'm exactly in people's opinions. Coco? Hello, sir. You said exactly. Uh, you want to expand on that thought? Uh, it, it, come, it just come directly to the leader program um, in two. Um, I decided with one partner, uh, we decided to set up uh, some elementary and primary schools. But first of all, be before doing that, we plan to organize a summer camp. So we do a project pilot in Rwanda, then I will take it to Congo. This is coming to what Mr. Mark Prinsky says right now. Really, even with us, we saw that the, the education is the key. Cause right in the east of our countries, some politicians, they really start using kid of primary school to to, ve to vehicle the bad information, and that really spoil all the generation. When the new generation doesn't have access to the right information, to the right education, really all the country will will be spoiled. And that's why we decide we decide to say. If we are running behind the government to train the government, they are there for their own system. Better to start down, down, down by training little kids. 
But how are we going to train little kids? Going to their own schools? Somehow it's come difficulties. Why not create our own schools? If not schools, but some tuition center all over the countries. Some tuition centers where we will teach now those kids and those kids will have a different expert, expertise, will grow up with different manners and then they can apply what we need to do. Because if we need to make it, if we need to apply it with those people who are ready for the place, it's very difficult. Better to start in the educations and the lower education possible. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, uh, Kevin, you've set up. Uh, it's in August that I'm going to give a session. And in and in, I'm I'm I'm, I'm really rethinking that right now. I'm well, kidding. whatever it is. <laughs> Whatever it is, I would like to talk about this concept of empowerment hubs and that, okay, that, that good. It really speak Excellent. to uh, what Coco was saying, uh, how we can rethink, not incrementally change education because as, as Britt said so well, it won't happen, um, but, the, uh, but how can we create something separate alongside that works uh, for the for the young people and that gets them as Coco so nicely said uh, when before they've been fully um, uh, trained as we talk about the models on the old stuff and once mm -hmm. you train people it's humans are just like these machines once you train them badly that's what they keep doing you know uh, um, uh, the 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 uh, neuroscientists say um, you know, practice makes permanent. And that doesn't make perfect. It makes permanent. And so the more you the more you keep training people on the wrong stuff, the worse it gets. Mark, uh, given a recent conversation that we had for a different reason, um, you know, I, what I would imagine, right, for at the intersection of what you think and what Coco thinks is, you know, could you actually set up projects for young people to connect these villages Absolutely. forget about what the technology actually is but you know task them to uh create connectivity absolutely yes. that's <laughs> the whole concept of this this uh and i've got you know we're we i just stood up this institute for for empowerment accomplishment and impact uh that's uh I can share the proposal with everybody. We are we are doing this, and but we don't have to do the stuff. We just have to provide the the soil for the young people to organize in a certain way, basically around projects in small groups that they can execute. That will from which they will see, and we will all see improvements. And that is very doable, I think, um, but it's new and it's different and the educators uh, have trouble with it. Yeah, I, I, I think that you two, you, you've done some credentials exchange in, in chat. You should talk to each other, 100%. And we look forward to hearing your thoughts uh, when you're a, a guest speaker in August, Mark. Uh, you had an education topic that you wanted to potentially tee up. So is that the kernel of it or was it something else that was more over That's the on kernel the, of it. Okay. That's the, the kernel of it is, is there a way to create a system that that is not education, but that happens alongside, perhaps sometimes with education but that, but that is different, that is based on accomplishment, that is based on empowerment, that is not based on learning in advance. That, and, and I think there is, I think it's happening in many places around the world. I can't wait to talk to Coco more about it and other people. So, um, and, and we're, it's just pulling people like us together 
and especially with, with young people um, around the world to think in different ways, really to, to uh, I call it reframing, to reframe because this thing that we have this established called education around the globe very successfully served the 20th century or many people in the 20th century. It's not serving and not going to serve the future as well. And so what else can we do? Okay. Thoughts. Uh, I'm seeing stuff in chat. Anybody want to, Ben, you're raising your hand. Yeah, a quick, uh, quick comment. I got into computing in the 60s in part uh, through the uh, Boy Scouts and Explorers activities. So we have youth mechanisms that used to, I don't know if they still do, serve that kind of augmentation of the disciplined uh, traditional education system. I never would have gotten into computing had it not been for the cooperative of the uh, uh, Boy Scouts and, and Explorer Scouts and the partnership with availability of computing at Standard Oil of Indiana and NIPSCO and others. So that it seems that there are extra institutional structures that could be a part of your empowerment, um, empowerment model. That it doesn't have to defy the uh, a traditional institution as much as augment it and create the opportunities that the students need. Just a thought. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I see Boy Scouts and 4-H and a lot of other groups in the world is doing the kind of work. The, the problem is that the world is still convinced that learning in advance, which is our current system, learning in advance for years, 6, 12, 20 years, is the right way to go. And we can augment that. And so any projects, any things that happen are kind of nice enrichment in their own hand. But they have the things that it turns out first really counted in the past, as you said. But much more importantly, they're the things that will count in the future. And you can talk to people in all sorts of realms who will say, you know, the best thing that somebody can do in college is a big project. The best thing that somebody can do in high school is a project that has a that has a, a meaningful impact. And we hear this, and yet we don't change the learning in advance paradigm, or we don't say, we don't even question <clears throat> the learning in advance paradigm. Experiential learning is sometimes absent in uh, many of the curriculum because they focus on as I said, uh, not how you think, but what you know. And so they focus on training. Now, at the same time, I want to be careful we don't create Hitler youth and uh, pioneer in the Soviet system and others as well. So let I'm me, cautious let me about go further, that. though, Ben, and we should have this conversation yeah, sorry. At, a, at a time when we can do this. But my view is that the focus on learning as the outcome whether you call it experiential learning or this learning or that, the focus is always on learning. No, the focus should be on the impact, on the accomplishment. And if we said that we're in business to get accomplishment out, and by the way, you can't do that without some learning along the way, but we're not focused on learning. We don't give a shit about learning. We give a shit about things getting better, about accomplishment, about you're pointing to something you did that was that made things better than they were before you did them. And so uh, that is hard. I don't know that that exists That's much in this world. And, and I'm trying to help it exist more. So what are you, uh, you know, it's somewhat preemptive, all right, but uh, to, you know, the larger conversation, but like John Awada last week, he said, well, I want to interview some more executives, all right, for stakeholder capitalism. What are you looking for, Mark? Are, are you looking for, you know, resource providers? Are you looking for educators that are willing to prototype in this space? What, what is it that you're looking for that would cause this to become actionable? All of the above. What I'm looking for 
is people the people who are willing to look at the same problem differently. Some of them will be teachers. They are already involved in design for change and programs where they have this kind of thing. Some of them will be will be uh, you know academics, although they tend not to be those people. Some of them will be John Seeley Brown. Some of them will be you know the kinds of people who are here, but they're willing to let go of a vision of a paradigm that's been in place very strongly around the world for a very long time and to say well you know maybe we could raise our young people differently yeah. and every time i find those people and i have lots of them all around the world we have great conversations we have long things we launch projects we do this but my issue is always finding those people those are the people who read my book but there are few of them okay so i want to point you are you familiar there are all a handful of schools that are based on this concept are you familiar with warren wilson college in Asheville, north carolina no okay so warren wilson all right has this model uh where the students run the college all right and at the same time that they are studying history or uh, economics or whatever their major is, <clears throat> they're also apprenticing into a profession, right? They have their own forest. So they have a forestry program where they cut down and mill their own lumber. They have a, you know, the students run the kitchen. So the food that they eat, all right, they are, you know, going into a culinary program. They have a hotel thing so that they're servicing the rooms where they live. And in some cases, I don't start, when a building has to go up, they have a, an architect, you know, from you know, the area, but the students are the labor. They literally put up the dorm or the, the, the new building that they're going to have, you know, for, and they have a lot of pride in the fact that the entire thing is run by students. So there is a dean of labor, okay? <laughs> that teaches in it that that the dignity of labor that runs in parallel to the academic side of the institution. So I simply say there is a fusion, right? It, you know what their yeah. higher rate is out of this is a hundred percent. All the students are highly sought after from Warren Wilson because when they graduate, they don't have to learn how to work. They've been working the entire four years that they've been there. So I'm just pointing out, Gee, that, this is a kindred spirit to what you're that. saying. I love it. I love it. I, I, you know, the fact, essentially what my institute wants to do is connect all these things. Yes. So whether it yeah. whether it's Warren Wilson or Northeastern or, yeah. or any of these places, the people have been experimenting and doing things in this, in this line of thinking for a long time. They are fragmented. They're not connected. That's, you know, they're not, certainly not connected country to country. They're, it, and all I want to do is say, let's bring this whole line of thinking together in a way that we can expand it and make it an alternative. I don't say it has to replace mm -hmm. everything immediately, That's but right. it ought to be an alternative for those who uh, can use it. So thank you for that. Kevin, we will talk. Yeah, more. I, you ought to come over and visit, right? It's a, and that's a nice town too, right? I, I, I love Asheville. I <laughs> In any event, um, thoughts about uh, what Mark's uh, su suggesting? Schneider, um, I'm going to, are you with us? Because if you are, um, I thought that you might have some uh, thinking to share in this space. Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, just I'm a bit sick, so I haven't paid attention, but oh, uh, I, I, no comment to share. Yeah. I hope you you get well soon, my friend. All right. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, Ben. I just add a, a point. I th I think to Mark's point. Also, uh, for example, at HBS at, at Harvard Business School, we would always favor and expect performance. 
as you mark, you know, from uh, military uh, because they have a running start. They know how to work and, and uh, also bringing some of the best performers are those who are disciplined in science domains or other technical domains. So that a part of that is a discipline of work, achievement, accomplish, fo focus, all those things that are running start on the uh, graduate education at at uh, at Harvard at HBS, as you as you well know. I mean, my wife is a master gardener, and the master gardening uh, program in the state of North Carolina has brought um, to the uh, elementary schools. Uh, the ability for the young people while they're learning, you know, the early uh, life sciences and so on and so forth, they plant an edible garden and the students get emotionally involved in growing the garden. And then they're, you know, toward the end of the, you know, uh, semester, they harvest and have a, you know, their own meal, right? They're very proud of this, but they're watching the garden grow, right? Um, so they're learning something about, you know, um, uh, the plant side of biology, and it's it's a good program, right? Um, the teachers are very, you know, involved. They like it, right? And so it kind of is a bridge between a science class and recess as they go out and check on the garden and so on and so forth. And it's, you know, it's met with a lot of favor. So that's another one, Mark. Thank you. I, you know, the, the, there's a, I don't know if you've heard about the there was a, a, a college president in Texas who said, you know, I can't afford a, a football program anymore. It's, it's outrageous. And so we're going to turn our football field into an organic garden. And we're going to teach organic gardening to all our kids. And we're going to not only do that, we're going to feed the community through that organic garden. And they do. And it, it's, you know, it's one of these projects. All of these, these projects are are all over the world and they are all good and they need to be connected and brought into some kind of a, a unity with a name that isn't proprietary so that people can choose this as an option for their kids, just like they can choose Montessori instead of public regular public school, they ought to be able to choose an accomplishment-based education. And and that is what I'm that is what I'm trying to promote. Yeah. I mean, generally, the highest paid state employee in many states is the college football coach. Yeah. And the and and in some cases where the institution is not doing well, uh, they say, you know, we really can't afford, you know, the, the university anymore. Right. But we'll keep the college football program. Right. The inversion of the because we, we need the entertainment for our citizens, right? And as, as a, as a follow-up to that, there was a, a lovely simulator at one point made called, called uh, uh, College U or, or whatever, the virtual U, where you were a, an administrator running university and you were supposed to balance all these things. And it turns out that the only way to win that game and the easiest way to win that game is you just put all your money into athletics. Athletics, 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 find donors who support athletics. Your college is going to grow like crazy. And it was a true simulation, it turned out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to say that we have had a good open mic session. Uh, I, I thank everyone for participating. Mark, we're looking forward to having you as a guest speaker in uh, coming up in August, which is fantastic. Um, and... Uh, Gopi, we, we welcome you as a new member. We're glad to have you on. And um, we're, uh, we'll start to advertise our uh, next session. I gave you a little preview, I'm expecting uh, Vint, right? Uh, Surf and David Bray to be with us in the early days of, of July after the US July 4 holiday. Um, Coco, uh, thanks for all of your participation and um, uh, you know, commentary today. That was, that was great. Uh, Britt, thank you for your uh, uh, topic in addition to the, uh, the conversation. And uh, Barry, thanks for getting us kicked off. All right. So 
again, we uh, we value your uh, participation, your uh, being members of this community, and we look forward to uh, having you join us on the next PCI community call. Have a great Sunday. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Thank you.